He got 13th on a, quite the run, too. He took out uh, Ty, the Zelda player, and the Red as well. Uh, he was a very good player from, I believe, Massachusetts. But we are seeing the Steve coming out right now against Tilde. And, you know, I think this is the right pick against Tilde. If there's one thing that grinds Tilde's gears <laughs> in this game, it's characters that don't approach. Well, the problem is for DM, you chose to play Steve against somebody who grinds on Elite Smash. And, and that's where frame Steve's one shine. live. <laughs> yep, very true. So I feel like no matter how much uh, DM is going to go mine, I don't really what? think it matters. Well, this matters a little SDI, bit. SDI, please. Ooh, okay, wall okay. jump. I love that. The wall if jump to get around the down tilt. Yeah. yeah, he's practicing this. No phase at all. Going to be able to find the up tilt there. No pickup on it, though. I like how Tilde is getting his shines at least ready. While well, that down air didn't actually work for him, it's looking good right now. But right now, Tilde already knows to just shoo away the minecart. Like, yeah, I don't want no You don't have to approach it, you know? And as long as Tilde is locking in stage control as he approaches DM slowly, he's going to be finding his openings. You know, Steve, Steve has very powerful reversal game, but if you're not constantly thirsting for your aggressive option, Steve really has to be the one to make the first move there. And Tilde also, I want to give a quick compliment to, because like Light, he is one player that plays a spacey that is just able to make his recovery so ambiguous. Yeah. And you really just can't figure out which way he's going to recover. And his usage of wall jumps is just beautiful. Very, very true. All right. Well, once again, Tilde just at 87%. Doing, it's very funny because a lot of the criticism <laughs> around Tilde is like, oh, well, he just camps. He camps too. And it's like, listen, when somebody's camping you, what do you do? Camp back. Exactly. All right. I love the way he's also jumping off the side of the stage with the wall jumps as well. It's definitely tripping up DM a lot. Mm -hmm. He's throwing the little flint off the stage as well through that steep down tilt. And he's essentially saying, you know what? I know frame data at this point. I could just get around that by just jumping really high and then coming back with a kill confirm. Tilde also using Falco's jump height really well. I don't know why they started here. If there's anything you've watched about Tilde's Elite Smash streams is that he has Battlefield set to his stage so he can do his crazy combos. Yep. I feel um, like stage is a very important factor that not a lot of people talk Falco. about. Oh, especially against Falco. <laughs> all right. Until <laughs> he's shaking his head like, all right, what? <laughs> he's like, all right, yeah, you got that one. Ooh, okay. okay cool. This is the gold, though, so knockback's going to be increased by just a little bit. DM not going to be able to find anything, but here comes Tilde, of course, the dare, up air, back air. It all comes flying at you a little too fast, and now Tilde going to try and put on the jets a little bit. Unfortunately, DM not going to be able to follow up the dash attack. Oh, my oh God. My God. <laughs> yeah, we both saw it. I mean, he quick landed on the top platform to hopefully try and get an up smash out of it. Not going to be able to find it, though. But now DM going to be able to find Diamond at this point. A back air will oh. KO for sure now. Yeah, you can't land on top of Steve like that if he's doing up smash. He's got a good anti-air in that. But I like how Tilde's just been constantly not letting too much space exist between him, him and DM. I feel like DM is not really mining for materials this hard. Yeah. He's still got a good amount of iron in the reserve and is trying to get it while he can. I think he realizes that if he slips up one time yeah. in his car on the back foot, he's going to explode. And that's exactly what happens right there. Tilde looking ice cold. If you are looking for a way to beat Steve, there it is. watch it. Literally. Bait out his resources, bait out his minecart, bait out Anvil, bait out every reversal option he has until he's exhausted all of his iron. Keep him in a, in a, in a, in a bubble, because he can't hit you if you're like at Very mid-range. Only, only Grab can really connect with you. It, he's got such stubby hitboxes. Hey, Devin, can we go back to like the last KO? I just want to mm -hmm. talk about something like real quick. So if we like watch here uh, steve's have been i i like to say that the steve ceiling is very high yeah. so specifically right there oh there it goes a little too there fast <laughs> i love the way that a lot of the times that block where steve's will start to like place that block and like try and get something off of it i feel like this character's like ceiling is way too high that like people are just utilized they used to just do it all in uh, edge guards, right? They used right. to just put the block and it's like, all right, now you're dead. But now they're actually extending combos off of it more than just the up tilt. But if you don't know about this, is that oh, what Anvil Earth? through a uh, dirt block will actually like just send it like yeah. and continue. The, it's the weakest one. Hit, yeah, and continue the uh, hitbox on it too. It's so crazy. I but, know DM has put a lot of time into this character. It's just you have to be a specialist, I feel like. Like your block play, I can tell DM, not really a big fan of super intensive block placement. I think he's just trying to scrap right now with Tilde. And he's yeah, very good at that. You know, <laughs> being being someone who's played characters like Pyramid and Pikachu, like you're gonna be scrapping a lot with those characters. It's very weird to see Steve players approach, right? Yeah. Like it's it's the reason it doesn't why happen. <laughs> Right. It's the reason why some like players just don't mesh with like their campy like characters. Like yeah. 
for example, Zelda, right? If you follow her flow chart, like you'll go far, but if you approach, you're putting yourself in danger. And right. that's kind of the same thing with Steve, right? You're playing aggressive Steve, and while that's noble, you're still putting yourself in danger at this point. DM, though, looking really good, much better on this uh, like second game, but gonna bait Tilde in with the illusion into the up smash, boom, that stop's gone. Tilde getting a little tired of just DM just running away the entire time. And yeah. that's, you know, that's something he has to, you have to have mental fortitude in this game, especially when you can't always approach. I, I feel like also, to, to touch on what you were saying before, with Steve, I feel like the optimal way people have been playing him is just maximizing the amount of resources you can have Very true. because that'll get you out of the most situations. That'll get you the most bang for your buck. Say you're in disadvantage, you can place a block down. Say you're about to get hit, you can just reversal with minecart. Steve is just the counterplay character. He's, yeah. he's, his sole goal is to just find ways to get you to go a little t too far and put himself out of range so he can keep building their strong resources because when he has diamond, when he has all these crazy mats, he's able to hit you and he's able to hit you hard. Yeah, for sure. Tilde, though, going to be able to find the, the falling nair, but unfortunately just can't get a string going on. Oh, my God. DM was probably trying to prop him up with the oh, uh, upbeat no. hitbox on that. Ooh, okay, down air. Ooh, great tech, though, by Tilde. Very confident tech, too. Going to be able to down air, reverse up air. Can't find the back air at this point, but oh, send him out on vacation. But there <laughs> See it ya. is. Oh, my God. Yeah, for real. Actually, your train's going this way, right, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you to the other side of the caboose. Ooh, okay, though. Yeah. I like that a lot, actually. Wow, that was crazy. He held the mash long enough so that way DM couldn't really overextend with a block right there because that's probably the most awkward place for Steve to really get a kill right there. He was even out of the block zone right there, too. If you mash out low enough, there's doesn't matter how deep Steve is going with that fair, he's going to be overcommitting with it. I love the way that Tilde is just waiting. I feel like a lot of the times, like, players, especially when they're off stage, they're a little nervous, right? Like, I have to exhaust my jump. He knows that DM is going to at least try and go down there, and Tilde's like, well, he needs at least a little bit of startup time, right. so it's safe for me to act first here. But, up of smash, course, yeah. yeah that's, up that's, smash. that's the pitfall, is that I think Tilde was going to wait a little too long to mash out of that minecart right there. He wanted to go off stage, so he was safe. But the patience kind of bit him in the butt a little bit there as he got that diamond. So still, though, Tilde looking very comfortable. We don't see him floundering too much, but he's trying to land very aggressively now. He's on this last stock. And yeah. against Steve, a character that can run with momentum, uh, it's, it's tough. He's got my he, the DM Diamond Miner. My man has the diamonds on deck. Yeah, it's true. But no more gold, no more diamonds, and that is going hey. to be 2-0. Uh, we're still Yeah, we're still unsure about how many, you know, like games are in before top eight. I'm assuming all the top <laughs> eight is best of five or maybe even the finals. But of course that is going to be a 2-0 for Tilde over DM. Tri-State going to be able to get one. <laughs> yeah, Tilde does this, like, weird thing with his controller. Like, he, like, judges it, like, back and forth. I don't get that. Uh, I don't know either. Like, it's... Falco's, it's wa Falco's walk speed is weird. I like the way uh, Tilde uses micro it's movement. It's a good shake, by really the way. Well. That was That's a good, a good handshake. Shake, yeah. Really good reaction on Tilde for that handshake right there. Great. Perfect. Tilde is just impressive as a player. Like, he has found this way to make Falco... Like, he, he's like a scientist with this character, literally. Yeah, he's sure. found a way to dissect his advantage as well as make Falco's weaknesses and that he's very easy to hit, very, very good. Sure. He's utilized... He, he's found a way to accept the fact that Falco's horizontal movement is pretty bad, but his vertical movement is really, really solid. Sure. Very true. Highest jump height in the game. All right, well, we got a couple ads to go through before we land onto top eight. You got no, nothing going on April 9th. Make sure you guys go on to Xenosaga XL. It's $10 singles and $10 doubles. Ooh. We are bringing doubles back, everybody. Let's doubles go. is not dead. Thank go God. to Xenosaga April 9th. Doors open at 1, doubles at 2, and then singles at 4, If just in case you may not be the biggest doubles fan. Exclamation point Xenosaga in chat for all of that information, and we will see you there on